Hi, I'm Benny Knott from Noisy Post. I've been doing audio post production for over 15 years now, working in live concerts, films, also doing commercials. When I first started, we really didn't have the tools and plugins that we have now to get really clear audio. I want to show you some examples of how Waves Clarity D Reverb can really elevate your production. Let's get to it. <laughs> I'm currently working on a feature film and I'm going to show you how Clarity and Clarity D Reverb can really help your dialogue. So here I have an example in a kitchen and there's a fair amount of background noise, could be the fridge, could be fans on the lights, um, but there's also a fair amount of reverb in this uh, apartment. So check this out, this is the original and I'm gonna bypass both the effects here. Hey, I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes you can have all the furniture. Cool, and now I'm gonna show you what it's like with clarity. So this is just to get rid of some of the background ambience. Hey, I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes. You can have all the furniture. So we're at about 21 there. Uh, that could probably go up just a tad, but uh, let's add some clarity D reverb and I've already, uh, reset the neural um, network, and I've got this at about 26 on the dial. Hey, I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes. You can have all the furniture. So we're at, um, I'm using dialogue three with the noise reduction as well, so I might get rid of some more of that ambience in the background. So what I can do is I'll show you before and after um, here. Hey. I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes. You can have all the furniture. Hey, I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes. What we can do then now is I've got my own ambiences that I've already laid up here. Hey, yeah, listen to that. I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes. You can have all the furniture. Without. Hey, I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes. You can have all the furniture. We probably don't even need to go that hard. Like it's obviously just getting that little bit of extra clarity out of the dialogue and not having so much of that noise in the center there and that reverb, but check this out. Hey, I'm just gonna grab my office stuff. That sounds pretty unnatural. Like there's no reason why we can't back this off a little bit more. Hey. I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes. You can have all the furniture. With that again. Hey, I'm just gonna grab my office stuff and my clothes. You can have all the furniture. It's, it is really amazing uh, just to really, like, it's only has to be subtle. For a scene like this, it's not too important. It just needs to be a subtle uh, cleaning up of the dialogue just to get let it cut through. And obviously between uh, the original clarity and this D reverb, we're just getting a nice crisper sound. Once you've got your own ambiences, it gives you the control so you're not fighting against things like the reverb and the noise. You actually just can then bring as much ambience as you want in there. If you've got some ADR that's really clean, to be able to match the uh, reverb will be a lot easier as well. One thing to note, you can go too far with these plugins and it's really about finding a sweet balance. I'm going to show you an example in that same bit of audio where if you go too hard, you're going to hear artifacts. So let's look at that. So here in this, straight after this, these lines here. You can have all the furniture. There's a breath. Joseph, I really don't care about all that stuff. So that breath in particular, let's just boost this up to say 50%, might even just a bit more cleaning, maybe about 30. Joseph. So you can hear there the, the breath. Joseph. Joseph. And that Joseph, there's a bit of a, what I call a gargly sound, a bubbly sound that you've got to be really careful not to go too hard. So I'm just going to go the extreme and, and show you. Joseph. 
I really don't care about all that stuff. So I'm going to even, let's go for the whole line and let's just boost this stuff right up and just show you what's possible, but also what happens if you go too hard. Hey, I'm just going to grab my office stuff and my clothes. You can have all the furniture. Joseph, I really don't care about all that stuff. So you can hear, obviously, the breath uh, to the neural engine. It maybe thinks it's noise and not so much dialogue. And so either you could add a breath in yourself or even just reduce it for that one bit. But going that hard on the, the dials is not a good idea. But really, like, how much do you need this scene in particular to be clean? You don't really, like, having some reverb and stuff, it keeps it natural. So I wouldn't go that hard. In this scene, we are in a different part of the apartment, but because there's the staircase there, you can hear uh, it's probably made of concrete. It's quite reverberant for this, and they're yelling at each other, so there's a lot of reverb going on in this scene. So check this out. Joseph, when I met you, you were still trying to be a rapper or something. My father paid for you to finish your degree. He even gave you seed money so that you could start your firm. And I became... So you can hear there at about 23, I've got it on the dial. That's really reduced. You've still got the presence and there's still quite a long reverb, but like we don't want to be unnatural. So it still works, but you're getting the, like almost the meat of the reverb away and the dialogue's just coming out beautifully uh, because of that. So I'm going to just bypass uh, here so you can hear it. Joseph, when I met you, you were still trying to be a rapper or something. My father paid for you to finish your degree. He even gave you seed money so that you could start your firm. And I became one of the many investments in your father's portfolio. So it's really like doing a great job of taking the bulk of the reverb. It leaves some presence back there and it sounds really good. Uh, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, we just want to hear the dialogue nice and clear. And that's what it's doing. So if we add our ambiences back in that I've already been working on. Joseph, when I met you, you were still trying to be a rapper or something. My father paid for you to finish your degree. He even gave you seed Which, money so that you could... Once you've got that ambience in there, or if we had music, like particularly for things like scenes where there's music in the background, you're going to want that, that clarity in the dialogue. So uh, let's have a listen and I'll just um, bypass and unbypass again. Joseph, when I met you, you were still trying to be a rapper or something. My father paid for you to finish your degree. He even gave you seed money so that you could start your firm. And I'm going to push it even harder just so you can hear what it sounds like when we do that. Joseph, when I met you, you were still trying to be a rapper or something. My father paid for you to finish your degree. He even gave you seed money so that you could start your firm. And I became one of the many investments in your father's portfolio. So I, again, wouldn't push it that hard, but the difference between zero and say, you know, 20 ish where we were is huge. So I'm going to, with the uh, ambience in the background, I'm going to do it one more time where you can hear it. Joseph, when I met you, you were still trying to be a rapper or something. My father paid for you to finish your degree. He even gave you seed money so that you could start your firm. And I became one of the many investments in your father's portfolio. So honestly, just using it in a subtle way makes a huge difference when it comes to the clarity of your dialogue. So, you know, be careful with it because you can push it too far. But in the scheme of things, like it depends what else is going on in your scene. If you, as I said, got music or lots of effects and things like that, or even ADR, you've got to sort of match. Then this is a great way to really just give you that extra bit of clarity, hence in the name, uh, on your dialogue. I want to show you one more scene and this is between the couple in the living room and she's actually off mic walking away from him. So let's listen to the dialogue on its own with no processing. You want to watch something? Nah, I'm good. There's lots of noise. There's a heaps of reverb, particularly for her. And in this scene, uh, I would normally use the lapels to, uh, make sure her dialogue is clear. We could add a bit more reverb in her dialogue to show that she's uh, further away, but at least we would have got the clarity. But unfortunately, they only recorded this film with a boom the whole time. So there are some limitations for us. I'll show you the scene with uh, the background noise. It's not been, or ambiences, and there's a TV playing. I've not mixed any of this stuff properly, but uh, just have a listen to that. The same bit of you wanna watch something? Nah, I'm good. 
Yeah, my ambiences are subtle. You can't even hear them because the ambience from the boom is so loud. There's obviously now that dialogue in the background that's on the TV, but I'll show you with clarity as well. Uh, clarity and clarity D reverb. So here we go. The same bed I watched. You want to watch something? Nah, I'm good. I'm supposed to just sit here. And with that again. The same bed I watched. You want to watch something? Nah, I'm good. So once we've actually taken out all the noise and a bit of the reverb, we then will add back in the Foley, but we can obviously do it clean. And if we want to, we can pan that as well. The same bed I watched. You want to watch something? Nah, I'm good. I'm supposed so if you mute this. The same bed I watched my grandpa die in. So that's the ambience we've got and the TV. Here. The same bed I watched my grandpa You want to watch something? Nah, I'm good. I'm supposed to just sit here? And off again. The same bed I you want to watch something? Nah, I'm good. I'm supposed to just sit so there's heaps of noise, heaps of reverb, and we're obviously just trying to clean it out as as much as we can without it sounding too uh, artifacts, too many artifacts in there and all that sort of stuff. The same bed I watch you want to watch something? Nah, I'm good. I'm supposed to just sit here. Again, it might be too much, but we're really like, if you want to hear those words being spoken. The same bed I watched. You want to watch something? Nah, I'm good. I'm supposed to just sit here. I want to show you one more example, which isn't a feature film, but it's a live recording of a theatre show. Now, I can't give you any details of that theatre show, where it's recorded or anything like that. But what the issue is, is they don't want to use any lapel mics, which is common in theatre where you might have a hair mic. So the mic will be just here in your hairline. They sometimes put on their clothes, but that means they can change outfits and you actually get the best sound. And for live theatre, when you're you know, a good six metres away, or you could be even 30 metres away, depending on how big the auditorium is, you don't tend to see that hair mic, but it's a great way to get clear audio. But they've decided that they didn't want to do that. And so we have to mic this whole show, which only has four actors. The stage isn't huge, but we have to mic the whole stage without any hair mics. So we've been using a lot of shotgun mics. We've used the Sanken Boom. Uh, and we have uh, five of those across the front of the stage. We've got a few hidden around the set as well. But I'm going to show you what some of the microphone placements sound like. Uh, in their raw form and then what we can do to process them. So I've done a bit of EQ and compression on it as well. So we had someone on the stage who was just testing out the mic. So we tried all the different mic placements uh, and also had them positioned in the different locations that the dialogue would be. So the actors where they were standing for a different scene. So have a listen to this and you'll hear the, uh, the team setting up in the background as well, their lighting and sound team. So there's a bit of extra noise uh, that wouldn't be there on the actual show. Test facing upstage from that same bed position. So one thing to remember is that Sankin is not in the prime posse. This, these Sankins are either the front of the stage, which are like probably three metres from the actors. There's sometimes some that are in um, hidden around the lo like different locations on set. Uh, but we had to hide all the mics. Uh, they had to be not obvious to the audience. And also because it's going to be filmed, we didn't want the cameras to see the mics as well. So I'll play it for you again, and then I'm going to add some clarity in there just to clean it up. Test facing upstage from that same bed position. So a bit of clarity to get rid of some of the hiss and other noise. Test facing upstage from that same bed position. And then we'll put Clarity VX D Reverb Pro on here. And I'm going to just do my listening thing where you listen. Test facing upstage from that same bed position. And that's so that's the neural network button that you press and it basically listens to what it's um, going to be getting rid of. And you can click an auto button on the Pro version. And that means that it'll change if your scene changes as well. Test facing upstage from that same bed position. Test facing upstage from that same bed position. Now, you wouldn't want to go this hard with it. Obviously, it's getting rid of all the reverb, but it just sounds so unnatural. There's artifacts going on. Let's try just boosting the tail smooth to see if that helps. Test facing upstage from that same bed position. So that definitely gets Test rid of... Facing that definitely gets rid of some of the artifacts and stuff that is caused by it, but let's back that right off and let's just... Let's do an A-B test. Test facing upstage from that same bed position. And without either clarity. Test facing upstage.
from that same bed position. Now, we're in this recording going to have surround sound ambience mics for the audience as well. So having that bit of constant noise underneath means you could probably go a little bit harder than you would think otherwise because you're going to have other sound and other, like kind of the reverb of the room to balance it. But let's have one more listen. Maybe let's listen to a different section. This is a test of the shotgun near the bed position I'm in the front circle. Bypass. Facing the auditorium. Test facing the auditorium from the bed, from the bed circle position. And so the good thing, this is a the good thing with the pro version, obviously you've got different bands, so we can adjust things accordingly. So if there's not much reverb in the bottom end, we can obviously reduce it. If we don't want to take out too much of the top end brightness in the presence, you can obviously back that off as well. This is a test of the shotgun near the bed position. So what we could then do is maybe boost it in the lower mid section. This is a test of the shotgun near the bed position on the front circle facing the auditorium test facing the auditorium from the bed from the bed circle position this is a test Bypass. of the shotgun near the bed position on the front circle facing the auditorium test facing the auditorium from the bed from the bed circle position let's do a bit of eq this is a test of the shotgun near the bed position on the front circle facing the auditorium. Test facing the auditorium from the bed, from the bed circle position. This is a test of the shotgun near the bed position on the front circle facing the auditorium. Test facing the auditorium from the bed. So that sounds pretty good. Let's bypass all the plugins and listen to it before and after. This is a test of the shotgun near the bed position on the front circle facing the auditorium. Test facing the auditorium from the bed. This is a test of the shotgun near the bed position on the front circle. Facing the auditorium, test facing the auditorium from the bed. That's pretty amazing. The clarity suite of plugins is so important. If you're a podcaster who records podcasts in not ideal situations, a music producer who needs to get rid of reverb and noise in samples, if you're in film or post-production or even live concerts like I do as well, then these plugins will help you get the clarity that you need pun intended. I hope you found these examples helpful. And if you have any questions, write them in the comments below. Please feel free to send me some bad audio if you want me to have a play around with it. I'd love to be able to share some other examples with people. I'm Benny Knopp from Noisy Post. Please check out my other videos on my YouTube channel to help you in audio post production, as well as my website, noisypost.com.au, where I have some great tools and products that you can purchase that'll help you advance in audio post production. I'll see you on the next one.